Okay, in this video, I thought I'd take some time and talk a little bit about fin setups and uh, what I'm going to use on this. This is like a retro single fin type of board, but I'm going to put some side biters on it, meaning I'm going to have one large fin at the back and then kind of make it into like a thruster type of thing where I have two side biters on the side here. I'm going to use future fins or future fin boxes and I might get some smaller side biters. I don't know yet but I will have the boxes in it so I have that option. So there's a few different types of fin setups. I'll just briefly go over them. Um, you can look them up online but uh, these are this is basically what I've worked with. This is a, a Bane box and this is specifically a Fins Unlimited one and this is a 10 inch box or 10.5 10 inch long and it works with this little pin that you slide into like once I remove out this little piece here I'm not removing it until after I install it but it slides in and it locks in sorry you drop this little plate in and it slides and then there's a screw that lines up so you match that up or I should say you put the back in that plate is down below in this channel. You might not be able to see it. And once you put the fin in, you tighten that screw, this Phillips head screw, into this plate and it draws it tight and that's what holds the fin in. And then you can adjust it back and forth depending on if you want the board to feel looser or if you want it to have a little more drive. So that's how this type of fin box or fin system works. This has been around for a really long time, I believe. Then you have FCS fins, which I am not a huge fan of, although they are much easier to install. Um, it's just personal preference. I like future fins. Um, but anyways, these are some fin plugs. And how these work is you, you drill holes in your board. And I think there's a, there's a special tool or a jig for this. I'm not really familiar with it. I have these because I, uh, I use them to install um, uh, GoPro mounts on my board. So I'm going to install one of these later on the on the deck side of the board so we'll get to those later but that's one option too if you like future fins um, I like uh, fins unlimited fins just because um, it's got the full channel and it just seems like a stronger fin system there's lots of people out there who'd say otherwise there's some people who are FCS believers I think Kelly Slater rides like you know FCS fins uh, you know it's personal preference so I won't get into the the politics of fins um, so how this works is these are installed before you do glassing and there's a special system or a tool and jig that you need to install these i don't use that because i don't make enough boards to justify the 200 or 250 dollar cost for the system plus you need a, a router as well which i do have but um, it is it is pretty expensive for that system and it's just not worth it to me I can kind of I can kind of do a homebrew system to get it installed which I'm going to show you I don't think I'd recommend these for your first board um, probably go with FCS or a fins unlimited type of box um, so the way this works is there's a channel here there's a little notch here that fits on the back here and it just fits in snaps in you take your fin, um, your little tool here, your hex hex driver, and then you just tighten it down. And that's it. It's nice and solid. So that's kind of what I like about it. There's arguments that a rip that you know if you hit a rock or something, or you get you know a big wipeout, it might you could pull you know damage your board because it pulls right out. Whereas the FCS, the design is that the the tabs of the fins are hopefully will be more likely to pull out or snap off. So there's a couple different trains of thought, but I prefer Fins Unlimited, personal preference. So my setup will be like this. I'm gonna have the two on the side with it towed in, and then the main fin back here. Now fin placement, that's the next thing that we're gonna talk about. I should mention, I don't know if I did earlier, but the Fins Unlimited or the Bane Box type, this is installed after you do your glassing. So we're not going to use that right now. We're going to, well, I'm going to cut out 
the spots for these fins unlimited uh, fin boxes. I will use this for placement though as a rough estimate and there's a few different ways there's no right or wrong way really I think there's just some guidelines go look at your favorite board if you're copying a board if um, you know look just look online do some research be educated about it I am not really an expert in this uh, I just kind of know from the stuff I've read and just personal experience surfing but roughly for this box you generally want it around five to six inches from the bottom of the board so I'm gonna go about I'm gonna split the difference I'm gonna go five and a half so that's kind of my placement there now as I mentioned previously in other videos uh, I got my information off of like sway locks and posting on there and asking people but also I got some templates and stuff from green life surf supply um, so you can check out their website and I've referenced them previously so they have this wonderful um, wonderful guide just some rough guidelines and they even have something here for a single fin 2 plus 1 setup and I'm just gonna follow what they're saying and essentially I have my Bane box single fin in the back up about 5 inches and then this is going to roughly match up just past the Bane box so I'm gonna have something like that and the way they're recommending is that from the bottom of the fin you're measuring in one and one quarter in and then you're gonna tow in so tow in kinda of like um, the tires on a car where you tow it in if you're getting an alignment it's gonna to tow inward so you're gonna it's gonna go inward like that um, the thing I like about future fins as well is that the that the um, can't the fin can't or you might say camber is built in so your single fin or your your rear fin in a, in a thruster setup is going to be straight up like that but they because these are the side these are side fins they already have the camber built in or the cant I should say the fin cant so they got a couple degrees I'm not sure how many degrees probably about four to five degrees um, that's another benefit I like about those so anyways again personal preference so I'm gonna put it roughly around there and so I'm gonna measure inch and a quarter in and then I'm gonna go quarter of an inch in maybe even in oh actually no anywhere from according to them 1 8 to 3 16 of an inch um, I don't know I might do an eighth I'm not too sure Let's see what I feel like I'll probably go something like that so I'm gonna measure all that out now uh, I'm gonna turn on the other camera and uh, get started the one other thing though I should mention is that you need some type of tool be a router I have this Dremel trio type of of router I also have a, a DeWalt router that I use when I route out this stringer because that's really hard so I'm gonna use this because it it allows me a little bit of control where I don't have a template uh, so this is kind of like a a backyard way of installing future fins like I said you really do need you really do need the um, the template or the the system that they sell but it's quite expensive and uh, I don't really bother with it because I don't make enough boards so I'm gonna get set up and then we'll uh, we'll get started all right we're back so I've taken some quick I've already done some measurements and I've marked out the fin box um, so I've marked out the Bane box where its final resting place will be this we won't need again until we install uh, after the glassing I've measured back from the top of the box or the front of the box I should say back about two inches that's gonna be my overlap because my fin is probably going to sit somewhere in the middle, but I'll move it up and ba up and back, back and forth, I should say, uh, depending on uh, after I take it out for a ride and see how it rides. So there's a little bit of adjustment you can have with that big box. Um, so this is where the end of this fin is going to line up. So we're going to say roughly about there. So we're gonna have a little bit of overlap. So I'm just kind of eyeballing this. Um, 
just for placement. I'm going to actually measure it up finally here. Just I'm just having a look just to see if it makes sense. Yeah, I think so. Um, because the way this box works. Probably wanted about there. So probably let's see. Okay, I have this little useful tool here from Green Life Surf Supply, and it just makes marking out your fins a lot easier because you can. It has like increments that you can mark from. So you can put the stringer right in the center here, and then you can measure it out. So it counts two, four, six, eight, you know. And that just makes it easy to make sure that you're you're equal on both sides, which is what I'm going to do here. So I'm 16 and a half, 16 and a half on both sides. So I did an okay job at least keeping the board symmetrical. And even from there I'm going to measure in one and one quarter so I'm gonna go here one and one quarter so this is going to be the bottom of the fin fin box and again I'm not an expert at this there's probably better ways to do this I'm just kind of uh, Faking my way through this. Just double check my math. Yep. Actually, I want this to paddle fast. I might not go as far as that. That, that might, actually might be too much. I might just go an inch and a quarter. No, actually, I will do an inch and a quarter. Okay. Uh, Now what's lovely about this is it takes the guessing out of marking in your toe in because you have these marks here for the stringer. Once I line up this hole here, depending on what toe in I want, I'm going to do 1 8 because I don't want too much toe in for drag. I want it to paddle nice. So instead of like being a quarter of an inch, I'm just doing an eighth. And then there's holes poked in this plastic, this acetate. So I just poke through, and boom, it's done. And I can just draw it out. Just gonna double check it. And then I flip it over and do it the same to the other side. Okay. I had to do a little bit of double checking, but I was on the right, I was correct. So, um, if you want to verify, you can just measure here and then here and make sure you're like either one quarter or one eighth the difference between this mark and this mark by the stringer. So just, you can do some simple math just to figure that out. Now the way I install this fin box is I draw out because you're gonna have to do two cuts on a future fin box you're gonna draw out and to be honest I wouldn't rec like I said before I wouldn't recommend this as a first time fin installation or fin box 
there's uh, I think there's a couple of them. There's like Pro Box, and there's also um, you could also do glass on fins, uh, which I won't get to in this in this build um, series of videos. But maybe I'll do a separate one because glass on fins are another option. Um, so we're going to router out this part first, and we're going to figure out the depth of this on the router. So um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to adjust for that. So let me trace this out first. So you're going to line it up on either side with the line as it protrudes so you make sure you're on the same, the same spot. That's your, where, where the fin box will ultimately be. So you can see our original line here is the center. I've lined it up with the center of the fin box on the bottom. Do the same on the other side. And I apologize if this isn't the most clear in my description of how to do this isn't the uh, the clearest because this is uh, this is definitely one of the little bit more challenging aspects to explain. So we're going to route this out down to the depth of the fin box, and then we're going to do a secondary route on the outside. So this is inset into the board. The way future fins are is when you glass, you're going to tape over this and then you glass over it with the resin and, and fiberglass. When you do your sanding, you end up sanding down to this spot here. So you want to make sure that this is above where the glass, you want to make sure it's up above so you want this to sit flush and then you're going to grind away this top piece of the plastic so you see there's a lip that comes up that is that can be ground away it's going to be ground away which that makes the uh, the installation of the fins a little easier in that respect because uh, you don't do it after glassing you do it before glassing so we're going to adjust my little router here vacuum ready soon. Some safety glasses. So I need to do this route in two stages because the bit isn't deep enough.
Oh, blue circuit breaker. Guess that's why you can't have the heat on and the vacuum cleaner on at the same time. Anyways, I'll be right back. Okay, and we're back. I will have to shut off the heater and be cold for a little while while I do this. I don't think I've ever mentioned how much I love winter. So, at least I got the first part routed out before the circuit breaker blew. Um, so I've reset the, the trip circuit breaker. Now I'm going to mark and route out this portion. So this larger portion. This is this part here you got to be a little bit more careful of when you're cutting because what's nice the board is white the sealer I'm going to use is white this is white but if you decide to to paint or do anything if you have any imperfections when you do this cut you're going to see them they're going to show up so keep that in mind too So next, that's looking pretty nice. Got a nice channel in there. And for you guys at home, always wear safety glasses, but unfortunately it is so cold and messy that my safety glasses fog up. And I'm too lazy to get my face shield. But I'm not routing wood and stuff anyway, so. Um, next, we're gonna do a channel that's a little bit maybe this is what a 16 yeah, something like that we'll see That looks great. And there we go. So hopefully uh, my head cam captured it okay. So now this is flush. So when you when you sand and I did an okay job here, so there's not too much gap all the way around. Take your time. It's kind of hard. I was holding the vacuum too, and I really should just have the vacuum stationary. Um, when you sand now, after your, you do your glassing, the glassing is going to build up this section here. And when you sand, you're just going to sand off ever so slightly this top part. So you're going to tape over this, sand it off, and then it's done. It's ready to go. So the routing it out is kind of the hardest part, which as you can see, um, it's a little bit of a pain, but you can do it with bare minimum tools. Uh, you could even do it with just a regular Dremel if you, if you really had to. Um, so anyways, that's how you install a future fin box. Um, I don't think I'm gonna do too much else on the fins. Um, I'll show you once I do the glassing, hopefully, you know, a month and a half, uh, I'll do the, do the Bane box install. So anyways, thanks for watching. 
Uh, I'm not going to do um, the other side. It's exactly the same. That's it for now. All right. Thank you for watching.